right, in this video, we are going to take a look at a different kind of number lines. So far, we've only done number lines that go from zero to one hole. And we're going to see number lines here that uh, go more than one hole. They go past one hole, and they have multiple hole numbers on them. So here's one example. Uh, if you're looking at the number line, you can see we still start at zero. We still go to a fraction. We end at one. We don't end at one hole. We go to another fraction. We have multiple hole numbers. Zero, one half, one, and then one and a half, and so on. Now let's take a look at a problem and see how we might be able to use a number line to solve it. It says, in a relay race, each runner runs half of a lap. If there are four team members, how long is the race? So the way we can imagine it is each person is running half of a lap, so there's four people, so we should see one half four times. So we're going to see one half once. This is the first person running their part of the relay. Here's the second person running. So between these two people, so far they've run one whole lap. After the third person finishes running, so far they've run one and a half laps. And after fourth member finishes their half, all together, this relay team has run two whole laps. So the answer, how long the race? The uh, race is two laps. So let's just take a look at a couple of ways that if we're given a multiplication sentence, we can diagram it out on the number line. Uh, this says seven times one third, or we're going to see the fraction one third seven times, or that's how far the distance is going to go on the number line. Since this is the whole number, I know I'm going to need at least seven tick marks. So I'm going to do, uh, just to make sure I have more than seven, eight or nine. So this is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's nine. Okay. Now, the important number here is that three in my denominator. That tells me that I'm going to be counting by thirds. If this is zero thirds, I know that this is going to be one third. This is two-thirds, and instead of writing three-thirds, I'm going to write one whole. Now, after one whole, I know the uh, space here, the distance, or the amount that it's increasing by is one-third every time. So one plus one-third is one and one-third, one and two-thirds, and instead of saying one and three-thirds, we're going to say two wholes. Two and one-third, two and two-thirds, and three wholes. Now I'm paying attention to the fact that it's got seven as my whole number, so I'm going to see one third seven times. So I'll just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is where my point is. So now I know that seven times one third equals two and one third. Let's take a look at another problem. Here we have six times one-fourth, six groups of one-fourth, or we're going to travel by one-fourth six times. So I know if I'm going to be uh, moving six times, I'm going to need at least that many marks. So I've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And each one of those is going to increase by one-fourth. So I'll start at zero-fourths, increase by one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, and instead of four fourths, I'll do one whole. One and one fourth, two and one, two, sorry, uh, one and two fourths, one and three fourths. Now see, I've got six here. Six is my whole number. We're going to see one fourth six times, and we're going to increase by one fourth six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's my point. So based on my number line, I know that 6 times 1 fourth equals 1 and 2 fourths. Here we'll look at a few word problems and uh, see how we can use a number line to solve those. This problem says there are six people sharing some brownies. Each of them eats one third of a pan. So I've got each eating one third. I remember there's six people. The question is, how many pans of brownies do they need at all? Okay, well, I know that uh, my distance is going to increase by one third each time, or the amount eaten will go up by one third each person, and then there are six people, so I know I need at least six marks on my number line. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I've got more than six, I have enough room, I need to 
increase by one third from each increment on my number line. So we'll start at zero thirds, one third, two thirds, instead of three thirds, it's a whole. One third, two thirds, it's not three thirds, and it's not one whole either, it's two holes. Two and one third, two and two thirds. Okay. Now my number line is set up, I actually need to account for the six people that are eating brownies. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if six people are sharing brownies and they each eat one third of a pan, I know that I can set this up as an equation based on my number sentence, I, or my number line. I had six people each eating one third of a pan, and my number line tells me that so they're going to eat two whole pans. Let's try another. This says a large candy bar is shared among five friends. So that's important. I'm going to have five friends. Each of them eats one eighth of the candy bar. Okay, so I know I'm going to be increasing by one eighth each time, and I know I'm going to have five people. So I know I need at least room for at least those five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and since we're increasing by eighths, we'll start at zero eighths, and I'll skip here. Two eighths, four eighths, six eighths, and eight eighths. I'm not writing one whole just because we're stopping at one eighth. And I know I only need at least five, so I've got enough room here. Now, based on the fact that I have five friends, I'll show them here. Here's my first friend. Here's two, three, four, and there's my fifth friend. So five friends are each sharing one-eighth of a candy bar altogether. Based on my number line, they will have eaten five-eighths of the candy bar. Uh, one thing to think about here is to notice that uh, not all number lines that we're going to use will be increasing to more than one whole. Some of them will, but some of them will be similar to the number lines that we've done in the past, where they start at zero and they end at one whole. The important thing is we can use the number line to solve uh, those kinds of problems either way. Here's another. A cat sleeps one-fourth of an hour every hour. How long do they sleep in five hours? Okay. So I know I'm going to need to show that I have five hours in here, so I'll make sure I have more than five hours. Here's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if they're sleeping a fourth of an hour each time, or each hour, I know that I'll need to start at zero fourths. And each tick mark increase by one fourth. Two fourths. Three fourths, instead of four fourths, I'll do one whole. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Now a cat sleeps for a fourth of an hour the first hour, the second hour, the third hour, the fourth hour, and the fifth hour. Since it asks for five hours, I'll put my point here. And I'll write my number sentence that gives me the answer from the number line, which is five times one fourth equals one and one fourth, or one and one fourth hours. Okay, we'll look at one more problem. This says a book weighs one third of a pound. If there are seven books on a shelf, how much do they weigh in all? So I know I got to account for at least those seven books, and I'll put a couple more marks on here. So this is zero. We'll go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I know I've got room for at least my seven books. Now each of them weighs a third of a pound, so I know I'm going to increase by third or one third each time. So we'll start at zero thirds, one third, two thirds. Instead of three thirds, I'll write a whole. One third, two thirds. Instead of three thirds or one whole, it's two wholes. One third two-thirds, and instead this will be three holes. Now I've got to make sure that I mark off my seven books that are on the shelf, and each weighs a third of a pound. So there's one book, two, three books, four, five, six, and this is my seventh book. Now based on this number line, I'll write a number sentence for it that says seven 
books at one third of a pound each equals, based on my number line, two and one thirds pound. Uh, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how you can use number lines to be solving multiplication sentences involving fractions. Check back for more later.